We also had a gospel festival um, in the month of April, and as you are all aware, that that has also developed into a regional and international, with regional and international flavor, and that is a program that will continue to grow and show um, as we go forward. For the rest of the year, October to December, uh, we have a packed and exciting um, uh, schedule of events, and you will hear about them as we as we go forward. I want to encourage um, persons, Vincentians, who would be following this program and who would hear clippings from this media conference, to encourage your family, to encourage your friends, anybody you know, um, Vincentians and non-Vincentians, um, confidently um, promote your country and let them know about the activities that you will hear about today um, as we go forward with the development in these sectors. I just also want to mention that tomorrow we are going to welcome, host five very important persons, five executive members actually, of the Carnival Cooperation and PLC. Um, they'll be coming to St. Vincent and we'll host them for a few hours um, tomorrow. And I'm sure that um, after those discussions, we'll be able to update the nation further um, in terms of possibilities coming out of our discussions at that time. And I also want to say to the nation that in November, uh, we go to Puerto Rico for the Florida Caribbean um, Cruise Association's um, series of um, activities. Um, where we would also um, promote the destination and see if we can get even more cruise lines um, to our shores. So, very exciting times where um, tourism is concerned. And we have with us this afternoon, uh, Mr. Glenn Beach, he's the CEO of the Tourism Authority. He would have updated you a few days ago in terms of some specifics that are related to development um, by the Tourism Authority. Um, this afternoon, he will once again give you um, some updates in terms of um, what has been happening um, with the Tourism Authority. So I now invite him to um, address the gathering. Well, pleasant good afternoon to one and all. Well, you all heard from me the other the other last week to be specific uh, in terms of what's taking place within the tourism industry and what we're doing right now. The only update basically to give you is that, um, you know, in some of our meetings with American Airlines to be specific, uh, part of the agreement with them flying into St. Vincent and the Guernies was a joint marketing initiative uh, that will start hopefully uh, later on in October and we've come to an agreement in terms of what we will be doing in terms of digital marketing and certain cities that we're going to be focusing on like uh, Dallas, Washington, New York, do some stuff in London also. But the di digital marketing will cover everything. The deal basically is, is us putting in approximately 250,000 US with American Airlines, putting in approximately, I think it's 303,000 US, so just over 550,000 US for this new marketing initiative uh, in partnership with American Airlines is something we're looking forward to. As many of you would know, AA, American Airlines, has a, has a big name, they have a good following, and uh, we're very excited about it. As I said, as I've been saying over the past few years, the opening of Argyle International Airport now allows us to do a lot of things differently. One of, one of which is basically having a call to action. A call to action in terms of um, when we advertise that basically, you know, get in touch with AA.com, you have your tour operators, travel agents. We will be starting our roadshow in Canada from Monday, this coming Monday, and that will take place last for approximately a week, after which we will head to the United States to do one right after that. So we're excited about these things. We just finished the one in the United Kingdom. If you go onto our YouTube page, Discover SVG, or our Facebook page, you'll see some of the footage from those road shows. So we're excited about what's taking place, and as you heard the minister speak about the statistics and uh, how well we're doing so far this year. Knock on wood, hope that continues. Uh, we're 
natural disasters and such things, let's hope that we were kept safe, land of the blessed, and, and that we have a successful year. I think it's 99 days until Christmas, so I'm excited about that. And thank you for every everything. Oh, one other one other issue that that not issue is something. I don't know how many of you have heard of the Ark. The Ark is basically a, a sailing race that takes place over the Atlantic. So we will be testing in partnership with the Ark. Uh, we will be doing that race. That race will be coming to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in December of this year. As a matter of fact, they've also opened registration for the ARC next year. So far for this year's race, we have over 22 boats coming in. Uh, they've opened the registration for next year's ARC, of which you will, uh, I think, have a choice between St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines in their first hour of operation. I think they had eight regis registered, and I think five or six of them registered for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So these sort of things excite us. Uh, we continue to push ahead in terms of, of how we promote the destination. Sailing and yachting is our biggest niche market, and, and we continue to grow in that industry as in, as in every other niche market within the industry. So we're excited about the new things that are, that are taking place. There are some other things on the horizon, as, and as we come to um, sign in those contracts, crossing the T's and dotting the I's, we'll have a lot more information for you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Beach. Thank you for bringing us updates on the great work that your team is doing. As we move along, I invite Mr. Anthony Tibbles, the cultural officer from the Department of Culture, to bring you updates on independent, independent sorry, month of activities. Mr. Tibbles, over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to start by first addressing the cultural calendar and speak to the fact that the dance festival, which is sponsored by KCCU, is unfolding presently. We have just completed our second weekend. We have three more to go. The finals will take place on the 6th of October and you should be alerted already to the fact that the finals will start much earlier as there is a secondary program on the 6th that we are trying to create some space with. Um, as we go into October, I would like to put out a call immediately at this point to ask persons who are planning programs for October to notify us so that we can create the October calendar and include persons on it to the best of our ability. The theme, of course, for independence is working together to enhance national pride. And uh, there is a major activity in the Everything Vinci Expo, which will be at the Geese Terminal between the 22nd and the 27th. We are already aware of Sign Hill Pan Jamboree, although we don't have a date. There are persons here who will speak about the motorsports program and the visiting cars and motorbikes, so I will leave that. When we get into November, November is both Drama Month and Tourism Month. And in the case of the Department of Culture very specifically, we have the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines Theatre Art Festivals on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, starting with Friday the 2nd of November and going through to Sunday the 2nd of December. School festival in drama will run between Monday and Thursday. They will start on the 12th and will go to the 22nd. And then we will get into December which is the month of Christmas and nine mornings. And there is, of course, a second presentation on the Christmas nine mornings. I would like to highlight a little bit about the creative and cultural industries sector. We're having a consultation on Thursday of this week to address preparation for performance. And next week, on Tuesday the 25th, we team up with Master Room Studios to offer a discussion on music publishing. We will be fortunate to have visiting St. Vincent 
a gentleman who was at the head of the BMI for many years and he will speak about music publishing. And then in October we want to take a look at cultural policy as we review documents guiding the cultural planning. So that gives me a very short few moments to bring the multiplicity of what we are doing in culture and uh, of course there are other persons who will address you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Mr. Tibbles. As we shift gears a bit, I invite Mr. Brian Nash, the president of the SVG Tennis Association, to brief you on matters relating to the SVG Cup. Mr. Nash. Good evening. Um, I'll first start off before I go into the big event. Um, some things that we would have done recently. In July, from the 27th to the 7th of August, we had a level one coaching um, program. This was sponsored by Olympic Solidarity in conjunction with the ITF and we have 10 new level one coaches in St. Vincent and the Grenadines having fully passed the program and we also have five coaches who have to do over a particular segment of the program and would, should be successful when given the opportunity in six months time. So. We have more level one coaches in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to carry out the mandate. Um, after that, now we go into the wildcard tournament which leads up to the SVG Cup. So on the week of the 18th to the 20th of October, we'll have a wildcard tournament. Now this, the purpose of this tournament is to choose um, local players who will be given the wildcard opportunity to play in the SVG Cup and we'll be focusing on the under 18 males and females at this particular time. The tournament directors for that will be Roxanne Williams and Boy. Boy. And then in, on the 29th of October to November 3rd we have the SVG Cup. Um, this is done in conjunction with the Ministry of Tourism also, Mr. Carl Hale, who is a well-known tennis promoter and tournament director associated with the Rogers Cup in Canada. He will be spearheading this along with the SVG Tennis Association. And the categories are Junior ITF Under 18, Under, eight, uh, under 30, sorry, Under 30 Adults, under 40 adults and under 50 adults and we are expecting over 200 participants um, to the island who should be filling up the hotels and hiring the taxis and that should be that should offer well for tourism in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So as a result of that there is also a program of repairs taking place at the National Tennis Centre which is being spearheaded by the national lotteries and we are in different stages of this process. Um, we, at the end of it, we should have two extra courts um, at the college to add to the, the, the six that we have and that should, should do well for the development of the sport, the sport in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nash. And we continue in the area of sports. I invite a gentleman who is definitely not a newcomer to cricket, Mr. Miles Bascom, as he updates you on the SVG Independence Masters Cricket Festival. Tourism and the National Lotteries hosted the inaugural 
International Independence Masters T20 Festival. Um, last year we were able to attract four overseas teams and this year we are trying to um, do a bit better. All right. So far we have confirmed um, six teams, um, six overseas teams that would come and participate in the, in the tournament this year. Um, we have changed the format somewhat. We will now have two divisions. We will have a festival shield, which will cater to those teams who are you know, keen to compete, who still feel the youth running through them and, and want to play cricket at a very high standard. And then we will also have a FET division, which would cater for those uh, more fun-loving, you know, spirited players who, who are actually coming more for, you know, the sights and, and the excitement of, of playing than to actually compete. Right? So we expect to have um, 12 teams, um, well, six local and six foreign. And we expect that each division would have about, about 60. So it would be an even split. And we expect, we anticipate a very good um, tournament. We, we have an itinerary. We expect to start on the 22nd with an opening ceremony. Um, three match days, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. One rest day on the 26th. The semi-finals would be held on the 27th, which is our Independence Day, and finals and closing ceremony on the 28th of October. All right, we, last year we used facilities in Park Hill, Cumberland, uh, as well as the Honest Bay Plain Field. Sign Hill uh, was used for one, one of those days as well. And we expect to use um, those same facilities again. Um, the National Lottery, um, as a main sponsor, has played, has played a big part in making this tournament happen. And um, the teams received the tournament very well last year. In fact, all four, four teams, four overseas teams that were here last year, have already confirmed participation this year. Right? And we have and we were able to attract two additional teams, with some teams still indicating that they, they may be late but still trying to get in. Right? So um, maybe in, in by the end of the week we should be able to update if there are any additional uh, foreign teams. Right? So basically that's it for the, the International Masters T20 tournament. We expect to have a very good tournament this year and we expect that this tournament will continue to grow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bathroom. So, motor enthusiasts, motorsports enthusiasts, it's almost time to start your engines. I invite Mr. Marlon Myers, representative from the Motorsport SVG, to brief you. I know he's going to get your pulse racing for motorsport activities in St. Vincent and the Grandines in October. So, Mr. Myers, thank you very much. Yes, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm here representing uh, FEMA and SVG Motorcycle Club. Um, as of 2016, Vinci Motorsport Club and the SVG Motorcycle Club joined up and collaborated with um, the Ministry of Tourism, Sports and Culture to have independent events. Um, last year, we also teamed up with Invest SVG, where we had the Everything Vinci at the E.T. Joshua Airport, and that was, I think, a success. Everybody was enthusiastic about that. So this year, we are teaming up again with Ministry of Tourism and Sports and Culture to have the independence event, motor sports events again. And this year, it promises to be, you know, a little bit bigger, where we have folks coming in from Barbados,
Trinidad, St. Lucia, Grenada. We're going to have a couple sporting events at the E.T. Joshua Airport. I want to thank the Ministry of Sports and Culture for working along with us and they have been, you know, there with us from ever since. Along with the National Sports Council, who have facilitated us in getting um, waivers and so on for the, the, the folks coming in from overseas, where they wouldn't have to pay all the food stuff and customs and all that. So we want to thank them for working along with us in doing that. Um, This, this event has been put on the, the, the calendar of events for, for independence on a yearly basis now, so we, we're excited about that. Um, I know this year we had, we had um, the Tropical Shipping Beamer Cup, which was very excited, exciting, and um, it brought a few folks to this show from Antigua and Barbados with the, the BMW cars, and we had the events out at Diamond and at the E.T. Joshua. And I know a lot of folks spoke well of it. And we, we are continuing in this field, sorry, in this field. So this, this year, we're going to have our events from the starting from the 22nd of October up until the 28th of October. And that would be at, everything would be at the E.T. Joshua Airport. So we, we are asking everyone to you know, come out and support because, because it's, you know, you're supporting the country. Because we're bringing in Sports tourism is big, and it's been big in a lot of the Caribbean islands, especially Barbados, where they have the, the rally. The guys from Australia and all those places come in, and it brings in a lot of revenue. So we want to applaud the government and the, especially the Ministry of Sports and Culture in um, seeing you know, the, the possibilities of the most sports in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we, we, we want to continue to, uh, to you know, ask them for their assistance in making it possible every year on the, on the independence calendar. Thank you very much, Mr. Myers. We have worked our way through the months and we have heard from our previous speakers about the work that they've been doing in the area of sports, tourism and culture. And we definitely can't forget about one of our favorite times of the year. It's nine mornings, Mr. Peters. I don't think I can do justice to your duty as the chair of the nine mornings committee, so I leave it to you too. <laughs> so Mr. Peters, you can brief us on the nine mornings activities for this year. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. Uh, and uh, good afternoon to the media and folks listening to the various media houses and radio and television stations. Um, as our chairperson said, and the minister echoed, it's nine mornings. It is the number one festival in St. Vincent and Grenadines by geographic uh, distribution and also the fact that. Nine Mornings is the only festival in St. Vincent and Grenadines that has attracted over 10,000 persons. The only month of the year that we see over 10,000 visitors to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It, it remains a unique Vincentian tradition and thus a cultural and touristic curiosity. In 2018, we are continuing to celebrate this unique Vincentian tradition, doing what is necessary to keep it at the top of our cultural calendar and also to attract as many visitors returning nationals as possible and to encourage as wider local participation as possible. I would want to let you know that 
this year is a significant year in that it marks the 20th year that we have uh, the reorganization and development of the Nine Points Festival. It is not 20 years of it is, it is 20 years since we have reorganized and developed the Nine Points Festival from 1999 when Bas Alexander Jewel Providence Service Pullman and myself got together to form the SVG Nine Points Community Committee. Therefore, as part of these celebrations this year, we are producing a special commemorative magazine that will, will be a major publication seeking to document and capture the essence of the festival. This magazine will be launched officially in mid-November. It's being done in conjunction with interactive media, publishers of the search newspaper, and we expect as wide as possible distribution of this magazine. We are printing initially 2,000 copies, which will be distributed locally, regionally, internationally, especially through our tourist offices and embassies abroad. We are hoping that this magazine will also continue to promote this festival and attract second and third generation Vincentians who have never experienced um, the uniqueness of this festival to, to come back to this event. So it's going to be one of the ma major features of 2018, the publication for the first time, really seeking to document nine mornings festivities in St. Time and Grenadines. Um, secondly, the, fish, the festival will be officially launched on Sunday, the 2nd of December, with the traditional street parade, lighted street parade, uh, the lighting of Heritage Square, and our community concert. Last year, we had some tremendous improvements in the lighting of Heritage Square and we're seeking to, to go even better this year. So we know that um, folks will certainly look forward to what we intend to do in terms of the, the lighting. As a matter of fact, the, the Minister of Tourism, Sports and Culture and the SVG Nine Mornings Committee will be meeting with various stakeholders and agencies to see ways in which we can improve the festival. One of these, of course, is Vinlek. We are working definitely with Vinlek to improve the lighting in Kingston. We, have been disappointed over the years that the business community in particular have not responded as we would have liked with the lighting of their buildings. Since we promote um, Kingston as the Christmas capital of the world, uh, but the lighting is not up to that particular standard. So we are seeking to work with Finland this year to improve the lighting in Kingston. We want to have meetings and discussions with Invest SVG to see if we can improve the value added to the festival, getting the craft sector in particular to develop items and trinkets and figurines, etc., that will depict the Nine Mornings Festival, making them available for sale locally, and, as, and as, as far as possible, making them available to visitors as well, to take back some momentum to the media of the festival. We also want to meet with the Chamber of Commerce and Business House in Kingston to get them on board. Over the years, we have developed what we call two stream of lights on your building program, in which you're encouraging the commercial properties in Kingston to just put two streams of lights on your, on your property to create that ambience in the, in the capital of Kingston that would attract even more persons to the capital, window shopping, and, and all the various commercial activities that take place in December. We have seen the growth in shopping in Kingston, especially Sunday shopping which is a direct result of the growth of the Nine Months Festival. One of the other things we're seeking to do this year is to bring back and develop some of the programs that were part of the Christmas Nine Months celebrations over the years. One of these, uh, we'll be working closely with the folks at the Botanic Gardens towards the, the redevelopment and, and hosting of the Community Carolyn Competition, in which we are inviting business houses and various choirs to get involved. Uh, you certainly hear more of that as, as time um, goes on. We have a year-round program in terms of keeping the momentum going with the community groups. Because last year, we had 47 communities with activities around the country. And um, it is a tremendous challenge to keep the work going, especially when there's not much financial compensation. But the reward really is contribution to national development and 
early next month, October 13, we'll be meeting with community groups to, be, to begin the preparatory work for the 2018 festivities. Some of these community groups have already begun working and, and uh, planning their programs. So we just want to continue the process, basically encouraging them, updating them as to what is going to be happening for 2018. We are certainly looking forward to an exciting festival in 2018 as Nine Wallace continues to hold its position as the major attraction for visitors in St. Vincent and Grenadines. And we hope that folks from the Ministry of Tourism and CDC of the SVG Tourism Authority here will certainly put a lot of these scarce resources into the promotion of Nine Wallace as a major visitor attraction to St. Vincent and Grenadines. Certainly the international media over the years have been present. We've had um, live streaming of activities in various media in Canada and the United States, for which we're extremely grateful. And these have also helped to promote the festival. I can say to you, in that 2018 is going to be another exciting year for Nine Mornings Incidents and Telegrams. And come Sunday, the 2nd of December, when we launch in Kingston, we have thousands of people in here, and we'll be kicking off a very, very exciting festival this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Peters. And I know your committee, the Nine Mornings Committee, is not the only one having fun in the month of December. I invite Mr. Gordon Shallow from the SPG Botanic Gardens, and he's going to tell you a bit about the Nine Nights of Lights. It's become one of the major activities over the Christmas period where visitors and families look forward to seeing what the gardens has to offer. So, Mr. Shallow, if you can update us, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This event uh, came out of our 250th anniversary celebration in 2015, where we seek to have a big event every month. And in December, we chose to celebrate, to mirror and to celebrate um, the, the Nine Mornings Festival in, in, in some sort, where we have nine nights of lights. And this uh, event starts on the 15th of December, the night of the 15th, and goes until the 23rd. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. and it goes until uh, 10 p.m. at night. And uh, what we do there at the gardens, besides obviously lighting in the, in the garden or seeking to light the entire garden, is to have different events and uh, different uh, things there for all parts of the family, family members of the family. Uh, we have bombs and castles, uh, we have uh, local uh, foods, traditional foods and drinks. Um, we have uh, basically something for every member of the family. And on the first night, which is the night of the 15th, we, that's our big opening night, where we have the, the, the Royal St. Vincent the Rangers Police Band the open uh, there. We have um, a dance night, a drama night, a gospel night, a movie night, uh, a drumming night, Calypso, and uh, as Mr. Peter's mentioned this year we want to incorporate the uh, community caroling competition in there. And uh, on the last night that uh, we will have uh, our closing night, we will bring back some of the best acts um, that would have been seen through the previous nights. Uh, this is our fourth year um, since our uh, inaugural event in 2015, and we're hoping that this year uh, would be even bigger and better as last year was better than all of the other previous years. Um, thus far, uh, we have been basically funded most of this um, expense uh, for this uh, activity of the pocket, and we'd like to encourage um, members of the, the corporate sector to, to join in the pitching with us uh, in sponsoring uh, different things uh, there as we approach you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shallow. And that brings us to the end of our presentations this afternoon. As you heard, there are lots of activities and things to do over the next coming months. And St. Vincent and the is both for locals and for visitors. I now open the floor to the media. If you have any questions for any of the persons on the panel, this is the time to do so.
Any questions? Okay, well, it looks like it was a good afternoon and you're well informed. So I want to thank our listening audience via the radio. Thank you for joining us and our media partners, our colleagues. Thank you so much for covering this press conference and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon.